Hello and welcome to another episode of the LDO design and simulation in Altium Designer. And in today's episode, we will focus on the AC performance. Well, actually, uh, we will focus on instabilities and the phase and frequency response of the LDO design. This is the same LDO that I have described in previous episodes. And today we will focus on the phase frequency uh, uh, responses and instabilities. As you may probably know, some of the LDO, LDOs on the market, they require a particular ESR range uh, at the output capacitor. If you are within the range or within the recommendation of the vendor of the chip, you are, uh, you are having a stable regulation in this case. However, if your ESR is way too low or way too high, then you may observe instabilities at the output. Uh, okay, what you can see here is a transient simulation that I have run just a minute ago and it just presents that we are having a stable output. Of course, there is some um, overshoot at the input, but we will cover this in a different video. And what you can also see here, there are, those are markers, uh, measurement markers that you can easily add in Altium Designer. Uh, this is very, very useful by uh, output expression you just click on those three dots and it opens a uh, add output expression we go to measurements and we set for example the frequency we are interested in the frequency because we want to see the oscillation at the output when there is a instability in the loop and the mean value is of course the dc value at the output and you just specify the value uh, from which we want to measure the frequency which is actually the dc output and if any voltage swings above and beyond, the Altium Designer <coughs> um, measurements will capture this and it will provide you with the exact frequency so you don't have to use um, uh, markers in this case. The same for mean. And there is of course a time interval specified where to measure the, the frequency or the mean value, which is actually the average value of the output, uh, in this case the output voltage. So we are observing 3.628 volts and there is no frequency where because there is no AC component between 2 and 2.5 and um, millisecond. Okay, uh, so we are having a good regulation, stable regulation. Let's just lower the ESR if you are using, a, let's say, many uh, ceramic capacitors at, your, at the output of your ESR, you will be probably having a pretty good ESR. Pretty good means pretty low like 20 milliamps, for example, or even less. And let's see what happens. Now you see that there is an oscillation in the in, uh, at the output voltage of, of also on the V drive, which is the signal that drives, sorry, that, um, that drives the PMOS transistor here. And this is the first sign that we may have problems with stability. This can um, this call this stability issues may be also um, dependent on the load resistor. Uh, it may change just the frequency or it may change the time when mm, the oscillations are damped to to zero. Let's just change the 3.6 onto 36 just to see how it behaves. Yes, you can see that the oscillations are much better damped now and they are at lower frequency. Okay, let's get back to 3.6 ohm and let's use now the, the AC sweep, which actually require one AC source. And in this case, I will use a current source, one ampere current source that is loaded with a one ohm resistor that will um, that will create a one volt drop across this resistor and this is quite common to this this type of connection it's quite common to measure for example the dc to dc converters phase and frequency response where you attach a wide band transformer to a feedback loop you add like 50 or 10 ohm resistor you develop some voltage across it from 10 hertz to for example 100 kilohertz or above and there is an instrument that uh, sources this si sweep sine wave as well as measure its um, frequency and the phase uh, response uh, and the phase response and frequency response is of course measured at the at the output so the circuit is in the closed loop in this case 
Okay, uh, let's see what happens when we sweep from 1 hertz to 100 megahertz. Let's run the simulation. As you can see, there is a huge peak at the output. Oh my God. If we have something like this, we definitely will have a problems with oscillations. Of course, this does not mean that we will have a, a circuit that will behave like a generator, but this is a first sign that instability issues may occur. How does this um, feedback loop uh, analysis, the AC analysis works? Well, well, if we source a current here, we develop a voltage across R1A and this voltage drop will um, change the voltage feedback uh, value, which is sensed by the output because this I1 current source is actually floating. It just adds a bit of a signal to a feedback loop. So for example, if I would develop a DC current here of um, let's say 100 milliamps, then I will have a 100 milliamp drop here, which will of course uh, increase the output voltage by the same amount. So at very low frequencies, we have a one to one ratio because this is the decibel, this, the scale is in decibels. So there's a zero decibels. So it means that whatever we create here, goes to the output exactly with the same value and with a zero phase. Of course, so it's exactly the same signal for low frequency. But there is, of course, a lot of delays. Well, not a lot, but there are some components that causes that cause delays in the circuit or in the regulation. The first uh, component that causes the delay is the error amplifier because it has a finite bandwidth as well as some parasitic capacitances to the input for example, that forms a low pass filter. The second uh, component that adds delay or phase delay or changes the phase response is the PMOS transistor because it also has some capacitances. And the third one is the decoupling network because it's, it's a capacitor. So uh, if we are sourcing here a current, then the um, uh, because the current develops on the output is used to regulate the whole loop to keep the loop in regulation then we will of course observe some phase delay uh, or phase um, uh, change in, with respect to frequency because for dc current this capacitor does not exist here it's like open circuit however if we are increasing the ac signal coming from the i1 then coming out of v drive to drive the mosfet then this current flown by the drain of the Q1 will also change in the frequency. That's why the C1 and its ESR will definitely have an impact on the output, um, on the phase response and on, on the output performance and stability. Okay, uh, so we see that in with 20 milliamps we are having this kind of uh, response. And what we need to do in this case well, first of all, uh, we can reduce the bandwidth of the U1 of the error amplifier. Of course, we can go higher with the ESR. However, if we will be uh, simulating the drop, uh, the sudden change in the output current, then we will observe that the loop may be too slow to compensate for such a step uh, current uh, load. That's why we have to keep the loop bandwidth as high as possible, keeping it still within the stable region. Okay. So usually uh, we can, of course, increase the ESR, but as I mentioned, this will create a bigger drop. First of all, let's try to compensate for the loop bandwidth. So we will not have such high bandwidth and um, going up to, let's say, uh, tens of kilohertz. And to do this, we can um, we can uh, create a negative feedback loop that is dependent uh, in U1 uh, in the error amplifier. Okay, that's why I'm having here some components that will allow me to do so. So first of all, if we want to provide a negative feedback, we need to connect the pin number one, the output, with the negative input. However, there is a reference with zero ohm output resistance, so I will just boost this resistance by one kilo ohm, and then we can just connect this uh, RC network to to the output. Let me do it with just a wire. Oh, I have overshoot this one. 
once again like this and we can just copy the net the v drive net the v drive goes here and let's simulate now let's first of all let's freeze this ac analysis that we have we are having here so we can always refer to it later and let's run the ac again yes as you can see let me bolt uh, waveforms the 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 response is different and as long as we will be having a phase that is lagging so that's going into a negative phase um, delay then we will have a stable response however uh, stable means we will not create a generator but we can still see some ringing in the output when there is a sudden current change on when there is a startup of the um of the LDO. let's refer again back to the the one before as you can see there is a big change of course we also changed a bit the frequency response and okay so let's see now what does the transient look like because now this oscillation or the not not this oscillation sorry this peak is significantly damped let's see how does the transient performs And this is what we see on the transient. So there is no oscillation as we have seen before. Let me let me just uh, change this value to one picofarad, which actually means open circuit that we disconnect the RC network. Uh, oh, sorry, transient. Yes, so we can see that the frequency of oscillation is pretty damped. So that's the one way to go. And now let's just change the that was one nanofarad probably yes there is no oscillation at all so let's go into a state when we will have a generator at the output so let me minima minimize the esr3 the esr of the output capacitor significantly let's see what happens if we will use one milli yes now we are observing a 20 kilohertz oscillation at the output and these oscillations they are they are not damped let me just change the uh, settings of the transient so we observe a higher uh, time span larger time span is yes. as you can see we are we have created an ldo uh, generator and now to compensate for it or first of all let's also see the ac sorry ac now we should be seeing yes you see the face is no longer lagging now the face goes up and if you want to dig into the topic of the um, stability then you definitely will find a, um, interesting application notes and uh, documents with some math describing the poles zero analysis the criterions for criteria for having a stable regulation i will not go into this in this uh, presentation however we will just observe some practical uh, use cases and how to observe and how to um, uh, be sure or um, how to mitigate any oscillation um, phenomena that can occur in your circuit so with one million we are definitely having a huge uh, spike and the phase is no longer lagging i don't know if i will be able to compensate for it um, let's just change this um, one picofarad to one nanofarad let's observe the ac yes and now it should be stable with some oscillations however we should not have a generator at the output Yes, you see, uh, it's damped. It's well. Um, it's no no longer oscillating. However, if we, if we, uh, I will. Not, okay, let's let's try to do a step load at the uh, just to observe if we will have more oscillation when the step load occurs. So at the moment we are having 3.6 ohm with one kilo ohm, and then suddenly the switch will turn back the one uh, one uh, ampere current sorry that was the r4 load i have accidentally changed the the name but we want to have a 3.6 
arm here. And I remove the ground. Uh, first of all, transient. Yes. Oh, and it goes uh, during the step response, we got back into uh, an oscillation. So it's not damped enough or the we have to do something uh, else here. Let's go back uh, because in this case, before we load, we are having a one kilo ohm, and then when it suddenly changes the the load current, it get back to it it gets back to an undamped oscillation, 43 kilohertz. It's not big, but you definitely want to avoid this kind of um, uh, oscillation in your DC component. So let's go. Oh, but that was open circuit. Okay, and. So that's normal in this case, sorry. One nano, nanofarad and let's run the AC, uh, the transient again. Yes, and now you can see there is a, uh, during the step response and there is some kind of um, oscillations here. And we can still fight with those, changing the values of R1, uh, Rx1 and Cx1. Uh, let's make it 10 kilo ohms. Just, just to, just to play with the circuit. Yeah, it's much better because it definitely reflects on the output loop bandwidth. We want to reduce the bandwidth, but not so much that we will lose the regulation during the step load. And that, that's the case here. And we also, we need to dump this somehow. However, I don't know if I will be able to do so with just with this RC network. Uh, let's let's change this to 10 nanofarad that will push us a bit into the lower frequencies because if we will start with this pole oh yeah now it's dumped now it should be definitely better however during the step response the loop bandwidth of like few kilohertz may introduce a significant significant uh, undershoot transient come on Yes, as you can see here, for example, a significant drop. Okay, uh, let's, or actually that, wait, uh, fit, wait, fit document. That concludes uh, today's video. In the next video, we will also focus on the fit forward network that will allow us to dump or to reduce this, this overshoot. So thank you for your attention. Have a great day.